What can you expect in your first year of retirement? Is it going to be a bed of roses? Is it going to be a life of leisure? Are you going to be spending your time on the golf course, walking, traveling, doing all those things that you couldn't do because you were working? Or does something else lie in wait? A trap for the unwary. In this video, I'll share my experience of early retirement and I'll give you some tips on how to avoid some of the pitfalls and the traps that I fell into in my first year in retirement. Welcome back to my channel. Today is Friday. If you've been here before, you'll know that today is the day that I take my 94 year old Uncle Archie to Tesco to do his weekly shop. I dropped him off about 10 minutes ago and I'm now having a walk on the Knavesmire, which is a very popular part of York for dog walkers, joggers. It's an open expanse of countryside that's just only about a mile, maybe two miles maximum from the centre of York. It's where the, uh, the races are held, the York races, which I'm very fond of. So today I'm going to have a chat whilst I'm walking about the pitfalls that can lie in wait for the unwary with regards to early retirement and what you can actually expect in your first year of retirement. Early retirement, in fact, just retirement in general, is supposed to be a great time. We've built up for it our whole lives, haven't we? In my case, I went to work when I was 19 and I spent 25 years working in an office, mostly, before I finally retired at age 44 after selling my business. For a lot of people, I know that kind of age isn't really attainable. They're more likely to retire in their 60s. So for most of you, uh, I get it, you're probably going to be working for at least 40 years. And uh, for some people, they will be walking, sorry, they'll be working for 50 years. This video probably isn't aimed too much at the factory worker or the manufacturing worker, the construction worker, people who've got physical jobs. I, I don't really have much experience of that. As I said earlier, uh, I spent all my life working in an office. So this one's for the office workers. What are you leaving behind when you retire? What are the good things that you're going to leave behind? Well, you're going to leave behind the commute. I don't know about you, but it used to take me an hour to drive into work most days, an hour to drive back stuck in traffic. You're going to leave that behind. What else are you going to leave behind? You're going to leave behind the stresses of uh, working in office. For most people, that means the stress of a boss. Uh, and I did have a boss for nearly 11 years before I set up my own business. And then at 30, I became the boss. So I became the one that people used to be stressed out about. So yeah, you're going to leave that behind. What else are you going to leave behind? What are you going to leave behind uncooperative co-workers? Um, I said in one of my earlier videos that uh, you don't have a great deal of control over the people that you work with and some of them are assholes or as they say in America, assholes. So that's it, both words for the British and American viewers, arsehole and asshole. And let's face it, we do meet a lot of those uh, during our working life. The other thing that you're going to leave behind though is you're going to leave behind your friends at work. And uh, we do make friends at work during the uh, during the years when we're, when we're at work, at least most of us do. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I left work um, at 44, as I said earlier, and uh, didn't, didn't have one single friend, uh, in all honesty. Um, so, but for some of you, I know you make good friendships, so you're probably leaving those behind. It can often be hard to maintain relationships when you've uh, left work, especially if the people you're leaving behind are still working. So, early retirement and retirement itself, that first year. Well, the first year, you're probably going to experience a bit of a honeymoon period for the first six months or so. To some extent, that will depend on the time of year that you retire. I retired in the summer, um, in the May, and uh, the weather was great. Lots of activities to keep me going in those first few months. I played a lot of golf, very badly, as I've said in other videos. It's a game that makes me angry. Um, I spent a lot of time with my young son. Um, I went to see his sporting events at his school, things like his cricket. That time of year, it's cricket in England. Also, he played for a local village team at cricket. So I, I went to uh, watch him play cricket uh, for the local village team. 
that was always good fun. So yeah, the summer was a real honeymoon period. Uh, my wife and I and our young son, we also went away on some fairly extended holidays, knowing that I wasn't having to return to work and the pressures of work. So we went out to the Caribbean, uh, we went to Singapore, Australia, New Zealand. We had some, some, some great holidays in that, uh, during that time. It was a honeymoon period for me. Uh, and the reason it was a honeymoon period was that I hadn't really done any preparation for retirement. Um, you could argue, and um, I won't argue with you about this, you could argue that 44 was a bit too young to retire. And that may well be the case. Um, if I could go back uh, to the age I was then, would I still retire? Yeah, absolutely, 100% I would. So for me, I didn't make a mistake. I know some people in the comments think that it was a waste of a brain and a, a waste of my potential and all this kind of stuff. And yeah, I hear you, but uh, I don't think so. I was happy to retire at 44. But the second six months in that first year were not good partly due to the British winter, I think. It gets a bit gloomy and dark and wet and windy in this country. Uh, we did have a holiday to the Caribbean lined up, um, which helped. But once January came, I was a bit lost. I hadn't really made plans what to do. Most of my friends were from my school days and they were people who were still working. They weren't retired like me. They were 44, they were still working. So they weren't available to do anything with. I couldn't go out cycling with them or golfing with them or any of those kind of things. So uh, I won't lie to you, I sunk into a bit of a funk in that second six months. Um, I didn't get out of the house enough. Um, back then I discovered online poker, which is not a good thing. Um, and I spent hours playing online poker, um, often into the uh, into lunchtime and the afternoon, still in my dressing gown. So yeah, I didn't really make the most of those six months. It was, it was not a good time, but I knew it couldn't continue. So I started to think about making some changes to my life, which meant that uh, I could get myself out of this depression or this black mood that, that I was in. Admittedly, it became a lot easier once the, once the summer arrived again, because we're then back to cricket, golf, cycling, all the things that you can do when the weather's good. But around about March time, um, I started putting out feelers to see if there were other people like me who had retired early. Perhaps they'd sold a business or maybe they were a senior executive who'd managed to get away from the, the corporate grind, you know, 10 years or so early, something like that. And, uh, and I was successful in finding a group of people to hang out with um, in, in an investment club, talking about uh, investing in stocks and shares and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that was the outlet that I needed. Um, it introduced me to a new group of people and I made some very good friends who are still friends to this day. Um, and that is the main point that I'm gonna make to you. The one thing that we don't think about, or at least I didn't think about, was the human connection. Work gives us that human connection. We're, 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 we're talking to people, having meetings with people, hanging out with people, whether that be clients, candidates, colleagues, um, whoever, but we are hanging out with people and we're chatting with people. Um, if you work in an office, that's what it's like. Office life is busy having a chat over a cup of coffee, taking your colleagues out for a lunch, that sort of thing. You know, it's a very social type of environment. And all of a sudden you find yourself not having that anymore. You're not surrounded by dozens of people. And that is the biggest challenge and the biggest transition that I think most of you will find if you don't prepare for it. So how do you prepare for it? Well, I think my answer to that is to give you uh, a role model, which was my father. He wasn't a, an office worker. He was a policeman um, and he was on the beat for 30 years. I think he spent the last 10 years or so in the office, in the station as the, as the station uh, office man uh, and, the, and the clerk to the uh, magistrate's court. 
So, um, you know, his job meant that he came into contact with a lot of people. He retired at 56, and when he retired, he had a network of social connections that he could fall back on, which meant that he was never lonely. And how he achieved that was he started doing something about it, knowing that he was going to retire at 56. And he nurtured friendships around sport to do with golf, around his allotment. He nurtured friendships within his profession, which meant that he could uh, spend uh, a, couple of, a couple of days, sorry, he could spend a couple of days uh, a week working as um, a police advisor for a firm of solicitors. So that's the lesson for me. I didn't do any of that, but I would advise you to at least two or three years out from your retirement, assuming it's not something that's sudden, uh, but two or three years out from your retirement, start thinking about who are you going to hang out with. Five days a week of being in an office needs to be replaced with other forms of social connection. And the obvious place to do that is um, sports clubs of some kind, whether that be golf or whether that be cycling. That's another one that seems to be popular. Um, walking clubs, that kind of thing. So a lot of sporting activities uh, can involve uh, um, hanging out with people and I think that's really important. But I think you've got to find the right thing for you. My advice to you is to make a concerted effort to find people who you will hang out with once you are retired to replace the office workers or the colleagues that you've been uh, hanging out with throughout your whole career. So hopefully that tip will resolve the problem of loneliness and not having people to spend your days with now that you're not working anymore. But the next big thing that I need to discuss with you that I think needs covering off is purpose. Because the one thing that I found for after leaving work, after about eight or nine months, is I had a distinct lack of purpose in my life. My business gave me purpose. My name was on the door, but that all went. I found that I didn't really have a great deal of purpose. Being a dad was fantastic. I mean, you could argue that's a purpose, and it was to some extent, but I needed a professional purpose. I needed a way of using the knowledge that I'd gained over the previous 25 years in some sort of constructive way. Now for me, I decided to become a business advisor, a business consultant, um, and also to do some executive coaching. I missed the hustle and bustle of business, and that seemed like a good way of keeping me in the business world and keeping my mind sharp, keeping me current with the, the trends and the things that were going on in business. So that's what I decided to do. Um, I also did a little bit of, uh, on a very small scale, small uh, angel investing in uh, small growing businesses and startups, but uh, I won't talk too much about that because it didn't go very well, quite frankly. Um, I was as bad at angel investing as I was at golf. Um, so that one didn't work out quite as well. If you have got a profession and you have got a knowledge and a skill set that can still be utilized in some form of consulting or advisory capacity, then I would seriously consider setting up uh, your own solo small business um, to, to use your knowledge to help others. It seems such a terrible waste, especially for those of you that have been working 40 or 50 years. It does seem a terrible waste for all that crystallized knowledge uh, not to be used in some capacity. And, and there's lots of ways you can do that. You don't just have to set up a consulting firm. I mean, you can write blogs, you can maybe have a YouTube channel that's in your particular niche, but just find some way of getting your knowledge out there. The other thing that that'll do is be, you, you haven't finished learning just because you're, say, in your 60s, It'll keep you to some extent 
close to the profession that you might have always loved. And that's what I found. I found in my 50s that I stayed up to date with all the trends in the recruitment industry. The transition towards uh, social media for sourcing candidates and clients uh, on all those kind of things. It kept me very current and uh, any new practices that were, were going on in my industry. And that's the other thing that you'll find that if you maintain a growth mindset and you couple it with the knowledge that you've built up then you can still make some kind of impact in the world. And I think that's important. It gives you some kind of purpose. And I believe having a purpose in retirement is really important. So yeah, that's just my uh, two penneth. I'm probably gonna have to uh, head back now and pick up Uncle Archie from his Tesco shop. He'll be sat outside Tesco's with his trolley waiting for me. So uh, yeah, those are just my Friday ramblings. Um, I'm hoping to do a few more of these kind of videos. I'd be uh, appreciative if you could leave a comment below to let me know what you think to these uh, kind of uh, videos. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.